Hey guys, Sonic from Canadian Rider. Today we're going to be doing a video that's been requested a lot, creating the ultimate moto vlogging helmet. So this video is going to be broken down into three different sections, guys. Video, audio, and everything else in between. So number one is video. This is going to be one of the more important parts of this entire guide, is making sure that whatever you're capturing is really what you're seeing and is true to form of what you want to capture and show to your audience. So you're looking for a lot of things in your camera. You're looking for something that's compact. You need it to be small. You're looking for something with high quality video. You want your videos to start out with a good platform. You want some high quality raw video so you can take that video and edit it. You don't want to start with a low quality piece. Now I've looked at tons of options. There's tons of different, the drift cam, everything else. I thought the best option in this scenario here, and it's also cost effective because it's not the new one, is the GoPro Hero 3 Plus. And there's a few reasons for that. Number one, size. Really small, compact size, really able to put it on your helmet without feeling too much of a hassle or it's too big, that kind of bobblehead feel. So it's nice, compact, and small. Number two, video quality and field of view. The GoPro Hero 3 Plus has two key features. Number one, it records at 1080p at 60 frames per second. So you have that fluid motion in your video. It's especially important because you're on a high speed motorcycle. It'll capture the fluidity of the motion much better than the 30 frames per second. The second great feature that the GoPro Hero 3 Plus has for the field of view is super view. It adds a little bit extra to the top and bottom. So you're capturing more of the top part of the image and the bottom part of the image. This is important because when you're on your motorcycle, a lot of the image is already taken up by your motorcycle. Right? So if you're going on your motorcycle, it's taken up by your motorcycle. You still want to see your motorcycle a bit, but you want to see what's ahead of you past the horizon. So this is great for that. So I run my GoPro Hero 3 at 1080p, 60 frames per second with super view. So let's talk about how we mount this. I personally prefer the mount is at the chin. That's what I like. A lot of people put it on their side of their head. They put it wherever on the motorcycles. Some of them do. I prefer the kind of the old adage of what I see is what the camera and I want the camera to see. So I make sure that when I mount the camera on my helmet, it's basically giving you as much of the same vision that I'm seeing from my own eyes. And I think the chin view, the chin mount's perfect for this. Not only that does it give you that, it also causes less aerodynamic drag when you're on your motorcycle. I've tried my buddy's helmet with the kind of octopus uh, camera going on on the side. There's definitely a lot of drag compared to the chin mount view. It's gonna add drag regardless, but it's a lot better on the chin kind of flows with the lines of the helmet so the wind kind of goes past it. On my Shoei RF 1200, which is a new helmet by the way, uh, when I was trying to mount that onto the GoPro, there was a lot of space in between the mount point and the actual GoPro. So I had to actually get some 3M double-sided tape, the industrial strength, really sticky stuff, and kind of like bend that into it and push it in and kind of form the double-sided tape onto the mount so it would stick on the helmet properly. Now it's going to be different for all of you guys because everyone's got a different helmet, but it's something that you're going to have to play around with to make sure that the mount is securely attached to the front of the helmet. So if we're looking at the mount specifically on the helmet, I do have the J mount here. It's connected right to this uh, adhesive, the curved adhesive, and it's connected to actually a extension arm that I took out the thumb screws, the old like longer GoPro thumb screws, and I added these little Allen key black anodized thumb screws. This helps with the aerodynamic drag that you're facing, and it's gonna make it a much cleaner look on the front. You don't have those big two thumb screws sticking out on the front of your helmet. So now you're wondering, okay, so what am I gonna do? How am I gonna power the GoPro? You're not gonna carry batteries with you. GoPro batteries last an hour at best in the best ideal conditions. What you wanna do is get a GoPro battery eliminator. What this is, it takes the place of your battery in the GoPro, plugs it in and gives you a USB cable to keep the GoPro on. So this introduces the ability to have a battery pack on you. I have a 10,000 milliamp battery pack I got from Amazon, really cheap, it was like $20, and I just keep it in my jacket. I have a USB female cable attached to it, so now all I do is take this USB cable, attach it to the female end, and my GoPro's powered. Now, 10,000 milliamps. That's like the equivalent of 10 GoPro batteries in one battery pack that's really thin that could fit in your jacket. No more having to worry about charging your GoPro batteries. Um, how much battery do I have left? You know what, this battery lasts for multiple rides at a time and uh, it's so much more convenient doing it like this. What you can also do to kind of stealth the entire front end of your helmet if you want, there's blackout casings for GoPros. We can go ahead and the casing here is a black, completely matte black look. A lot of people like that look. I'm actually gonna order something like that soon uh, just to kind of like blend it all in because it, it does stick out just a tiny bit, right? But this is still pretty clean for what you're gonna experience on a chin mounted helmet. This is a really clean setup. Great, video is done. But the next important thing, and honestly, maybe even more important than the video quality, is your audio quality. So a few things first that you're talking about audio. 
Do not cheap out on audio. I tried cheaping out on audio. You can look at one of my previous videos here and you can see I used a China microphone there and it didn't turn out as good as some of the other videos that you've seen recently where I'm using a much better microphone and we're gonna walk through that right now. The one thing you're gonna need for sure on a GoPro when you're doing video recording is the GoPro 3.5 millimeter adapter cable. Now, do not buy the Chinese stuff again. I did the same thing. I bought the Chinese stuff for like $2 on AliExpress and eBay. They don't work. They actually just do not work. Spend the $20 on that GoPro cable um, from GoPro where it mounts the USB and it has the connection for the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, microphone jack. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna actually go on the side of your case here, drill a hole. I had like a, just a drill bit and I just drilled out a hole. I was able to stick the USB cable through the side here so we can have access to it through the case. And now we have this 3.5 millimeter jack coming out to the back of the GoPro and I just sticky taped it um, to the back here. And now we can go ahead and talk about a microphone. So the microphone I've used after testing four or five different microphones and is the best bang for your buck is a Sony ECM CS3 microphone. This little microphone is gonna save you a lot of headaches. Yeah, it's 20, 30 dollars where you live, but that's more than enough. The audio quality coming out of this microphone is actually outstanding, phenomenal. When I tried this microphone on compared to the China microphone the first time I put the video up on my computer, I was blown away by the audio quality. It, it doesn't take, take uh, the, all the rumble that's necessarily afflicted with your motorcycle and it keeps the kind of high frequency to mid frequency sounds of your voice, you know, untouched and it's great because you can hear me completely no matter how loud the background noise is in the background. So that's really great for a microphone, especially if you're doing motor vlogging and you want to talk. And I hope to get in another Super Sport uh, 600 CC class and up next year. If you guys got comments, suggestions, what I should get, you know, I've put, played around with some of my buddy's bikes. Uh, my one friend, Joe, he's actually right here in front of me. He's got the 675 triple, the Daytona. Now the other aspect to this is you're gonna wanna build a dead cat around this microphone. What is a dead cat? You want something to diffuse the sound of the wind. You wanna make sure that the wind isn't making contact with the microphone and it's picking up the noise from the wind or your breath. How I did it, I tried the uh, little fluffy dead cat balls. You know what, it kind of annoyed me, it made me tickle, I was sneezing in my helmet. So what I did was, I took a microfiber towel, cut it up, and just kind of wrapped it around the microphone two or three times and just taped it up. It's really something basic and simple as that is more than effective to get rid of the wind noise that you experience on a motorcycle or from your breathing. Once I taped up the microphone, the Sony microphone, with my little homemade dead cat, it worked wonders and was much better audio quality when we're talking about with the visor open or when I'm breathing heavily in my helmet. So the microphone cable, I did the same thing I did with the battery eliminator cable from coming from the GoPro. Uh, I simply wired it at the same line here, connected it to the double-sided sticky tape here to kind of clean up the lines on the side of the helmet here and wrapped it around. It's inside of the back of the cheek pads and it comes out. And the microphone placement I think is best is just around either the right hand side or left hand side. I don't think you want it too much higher on the helmet near the gasket and the visor so it avoids picking up wind noise there or too low because it might pick up some wind noise underneath you here. A lot of wind noise from your helmet guys comes from underneath when the air is scooping over your shoulders. So it's better to kind of keep it in the middle on the side near a cheek pad. That's where I found the best audio quality. What's the easiest way for me to connect my battery pack to my GoPro every time I get it on the motorcycle? So what I first naturally thought is the retractable USB cables. Uh, I thought, hey, you know what? If I can connect this to the battery pack in my jacket and I simply pull up, then I'd be okay. And it would be super easy and I would just simply connect it to my helmet's USB cable that's coming out from the side and I'm done, right? Super simple. Unfortunately, there's a lot of problems with this. So number one, none of the cables actually worked. So I ordered four different kinds from either Amazon, eBay, AliExpress, everything at different specifications. None of them worked. The actual cable, they're super thin on these ones compared to the bigger cables here that aren't retractable like this. They're super thin and they actually can't provide the power that's needed for the GoPro to start recording. So some of them uh, was able to turn on the GoPro. Some of them were not able to turn on the GoPro and some of them were able to turn it on and record for five minutes and then it would cut out and power would stop. So eventually I found out, okay, none of these are working and I need to stick with something like this, a two foot, USB to a uh, female adapter cable. So guys, definitely the easiest thing to do is have the battery pack in your jacket pocket, have the adapter cable to female um, in your jacket like this coming out of your jacket zipper and it's just always there ready to be plugged in into your helmet just as so and you're done.
So one of the cool features that you can also do on your GoPro is when you're recording and getting on your motorcycle, so you plug into your uh, battery pack, and now all you have to do is hold the power button for three seconds, it'll turn on the camera and automatically start recording. So this is the one button record feature. Turn that on, it really helps you save time, kind of that thought process of uh, did I turn on the camera or not, and did I set it to record. When you guys are coming back, and you're uploading your videos onto your computer and how you're gonna render them is to render them at the highest video quality possible. The reason you wanna do this is because video services like YouTube or Vimeo or that kind of stuff is gonna degrade the quality because it compresses it once more onto their servers. So the videos you guys see that are uploaded on my channel, while they look great, they look a lot better on my own computer sitting in front of me uncompressed again from YouTube for example. There you have it guys, the guide to the ultimate moto vlogging helmet. This will get you set up for the best audio, the best video experience that you can get for a good price. It's not like the best quality stuff out there, but this stuff here will get you 99% of the way there and it's at a good affordable price. If you got any questions, comments, leave them down below. If you like this video, like it. If you dislike this video, dislike it. And guys, please subscribe to my channel. I see we're at over 800 subscribers. It's amazing, you guys are commenting and everything about that. So I'm really happy and I wanted to say thank you again to all of you that have been supporting me along the way. And if you got Instagram, follow me on Canadian Rider Vlog. I'll be on there posting more pictures and I'll see you guys in my next video.